So we're going to do something a little bit different for this segment, which is uh, a look at spotlighting core and cherished members of the law.mit.edu community, people who have truly helped us to think and to advance. And this is a segment that I want to call, Where Are They Now? Um, and so some of you who have been um, participating for a time or or who were um, engaged earlier may notice that there's been a great absence in the force over the last few years uh, where TMA Roguer is supposed to be or where she formerly was, where perhaps one day she will come again. And um, I wanted to introduce those of you that are active now to, to a, really a core member uh, and one of the founding members of the MIT Computational Law Report and so many other aspects of law.mit.edu as well, who you may not be aware of or who you may not know, and then she is known other than, as I mentioned, TMA Roguer. And uh, TMA, I was just hoping you could, uh, um, you know, talk to us from Chicago, where you are now, and say a few words about what was your journey, um, you know, um, to and then, you know, with law.mit.edu. And let's just start there so that people can know who you are. And then we'll find out where you went. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I would love to talk about that. I mean, I fell into the law.mit.edu community by chance. I remember one day just coming into the media lab to attend, um, I think it was a, a Black Mirror identity workshop that you were hosting. And just being so impressed by the conversation and the people that were at this event that was just like this group of people from disparate backgrounds all interested in thinking about issues at the intersection of law and business and, te and technology, your VLT framework. Um, and yeah, I was not only so impressed by that event, but also how warm you were in terms of welcoming me once you realized that I had an interest in exploring technology more and kind of getting my feet wet into this whole new world of computational law that I had never been exposed to before. And it kind of became the launching pad for so much that has happened in my life since then. And I, yeah, I feel really grateful for the community. Here, here. And, you know, you, and you brought so much um, as well uh, in your role as, um, as an editor and advisor for the, and actually helped launch the MIT Computational Law Report, which is now kind of really the public facing flagship of law.mit.edu. And then TAing all those classes and starting to teach and, um, and you know uh, all the workshops and just all the amazing things. Um, and then like the like we even did some kind of like international little like um, yeah moves and uh, and cool engagements and things. Like you really dove in and and really helped um, helped us bring everything together. So you weren't really a legal person when you showed yeah. up initially. I, I thought of you as a business oriented. And um, very and very technically savvy. Um, what happened, and and where do, have you gone? Yeah. So I mean, where I'm at now, I credit fully to you. So um, I'm right now pursuing a JD MBA at U Chicago, and being a part of the law.mit.edu community is what really opened my eyes up to the possibility of even entering into the field of law. I think to your point before that, I was strictly in business. I think as I became more involved after, you know, taking the MIT computational law course and being more immersed in um, the, the tech industry, I started exploring that on my own. But I think that this community in particular and being exposed to so many brilliant legal minds and people who are so dedicated to exploring, you know, I'm, I'm maybe overusing this term, like the intersection of law and business, but I just think that these there's so much happening right now with like AI, with in finance, and anything in the world like through this community I discovered is touched by law. And I think that that's what propelled me to go and apply to law school. And right now my goal is to work, you know, in in business, um, but with this understanding of how law creates the scaffolding where so much is happening in, in the space, be it as a lawyer or as a um, business person. Here, here, yeah, and um, and really, truly, you have become trilingual now with with <laughs> business and law and and technology. Where you know, you're not saying much about it, but you're you're extremely technically savvy, and you you know, worked in some really interesting 
um, interesting hotbeds of technology over the years. Well, Jamie, what can I say? We miss you. It's so it's so great to check in with you um, on your journey now as you're as you're reforging yourself um, at University of Chicago in the MBA program and the JD program. Can't wait to see um, where, what direction you go when you launch um, after graduation. And uh, in the meantime, we just want to thank you for all the great collaborations we had and also for taking a moment just now to sort of check in with everybody uh, so we can see where are they now? I'm definitely going to name the segment, where are they now? <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I guess like one last thing is I feel like I am so excited to come back and become a part of the community once again, like once my program's over, because this community has, will always have a special place in my heart and I'm excited to contribute more once again. Okay. Well, there's, always, there's always a spot for you here. Um, okay. All right. Thank you. Have fun and playing in the snow in Chicago. Thank you. Bye. Bye.